381. My name is Keith Vanger. Along here is a good friend of mine, Sarita Stevens. And I just want to say thank you for joining us once again. And this is episode part two. Hi there. I'm so glad to see you again. <laughs> no, absolutely. You're doing good. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I said it's good to see you're doing so well. No, absolutely. Same here. I'm glad you're doing well. So, um, I have several new things that are in the works, including a possible TV show with my forensic nurse series. And um, I just finished um, another book, a true historical, that I was hired to write by a descendant of slaves. And it was a page award um, finalist. And, um, and a... Um, um, <laughs> and awarded several, won several other awards. Historical about a slave who ends up inheriting her master's plantation and has to fight the South and the family. And um, working on all sorts of different things, always. No, absolutely. You know, for people who want to see our first interview, it's going back two years and a half. So now the thing was 2015, and when we first were doing the interview. All you saw was basically, for my own, for all, let's give everyone a quick highlight of how many video quality has changed over the years. When I first, actually I think it's longer than actually two years and a half. I think it's almost like three. Three, I think, yeah. Yeah. When we first did the interview, all you saw was, it's basically the reflex and basically we just saw you. And now it's like season one, season two. Now I got, you know, what like people said, I got my head out of my ass, and now I'm doing Skype Recorder. Now it's cut in half. I'm on the right, you're on the left. So big difference. People were like, well, we should have done this from the start. Yeah, that's great. But then again, you wouldn't have seen any growth. You really wouldn't have seen anything change over that time. Yes, I see different colors, shirts, yellow, red, blue, whatever. But you wouldn't have seen the struggle. So I went from the phone to recording from the computer screen to about now doing Skype recorder. So four years, you saw a lot of process. Yes, like, you did. Well, in, in technology completely and in publishing and in writing. No, I agree with you. You know, you can't compare, you know, People are like, you can't be Jared Jeter overnight. You can't be A-Rod overnight. You're not kind of constantly hit home run after home run, home run after a homer after homer. You're going to basically start from the bottom. And you were one of the first people I helped, that helped me get up to 300. So realistically, oh, that's great. realistically um, before I messed up, when we first did the interview, I didn't actually design a permission form. I just said verbally, and I got up to 300. And then people said, you're not copyrighted. So I went to a lawyer, just catching you up uh, what you missed. Went to a lawyer. He said, you do not have to be copyrighted because you have an online presence. Two, you do not have to be trademarked because you're not making money off it. And Ooh. you just got to put yourself in the debt. For two thousand dollars, right? And he said, "Your biggest mistake was, I know I make people drink." <laughs> nah, <laughs> he that's said, funny. <laughs> I, I have my moments. He said, "Your biggest mistake was, you weren't having people sign permission forms." So from three hundred, I had to swallow like a hundred and fifty. Oh no! So I had to do it all over. So I wrote up the permission forms. Thanks to you, we're up to 381. And if you really want to think about it, I did over 600 interviews. Wow. Wow. Interesting. Are they all writers or what, directors? Who are they? Um, like I said in the beginning, I do it again. <laughs> it's uh, actors, actresses, models, CEOs, professional wrestlers, writers, teasers. Oh. Uh, people with disabilities, people without disabilities. Um, I interviewed a whole bunch of white people, black people, Spanish, Asians, you know, Indian, Muslims. Like so, I cover all my bases. 
straight gays. So no one's left out. So I can't say, well, why did you interview all these people instead of that people? So I covered all my ducks. <laughs> all yeah, my good. ducks are in a row. And right. I covered everything. Even, um, I don't know if you heard my interview a while ago. I was interviewed by Mark Melanie. And, um, Hey, no, I didn't, unfortunately. I have been so overwhelmed right now. But anyway, I, I will have to try to look at some of your interviews. <laughs> well, it wasn't I'm um, trying to get done in person, but it's basically a phone interview. If you want, I can send it to you. And he said to me, what is next for the Keep Engine Network? And I said, well, like I said, you know, lights, bikes, fantasies, and straights and everything. What I really want to do is get some goth for girls, and that, and that was about 2004, 2014, 2015. And since then, I got a couple. What I really want now, start doing group interviews. And Ed, let me get your honest opinion on this one. Group interviews in what way? What do you mean? What type of groups? Okay, well, you're a perfect example. You know, say... Group interviews, a lot of people get turned off by that idea. A group interviews, what I mean, it's interviewing two people at once. And the reason I came up with doing group interviews is because I'm horrible at talking to two people at once. So I'd, I would look at you, now look at your friend, and look at your friend, and look at back at you. So Ooh. group interviews is I interview two people at the same time. Say I would interview you... Uh, and your husband, or A and B, you and your son or daughter or whatever. And Ooh. then I was like, okay, now I have great practice of interviewing two people at the same time. Now I want to interview three people at the same time. So I get more comfortable talking in front of a group of people. Is this a matter of dividing your attention and learning how to balance things? Yes, and then the other reason is people said to me, why don't you do speaking engagements? And I said, well, I'm horrible talking at multiple people. So I was like, might as well use my interviews. Um, yes, for that's that. a great idea. Excellent idea. Well, what, what is your honest opinion? Then we can go over to see. Uh, you can tell me what you've been doing for the past three years. What is your opinion about group interviews? Do you think it's better one-on-one? -on -one, or do you think it takes attention away from a group interview? Well, um, I think your idea of using it to develop your own uh, proficiency in talking to multiple people is a great idea because you should start with small goals and move up to larger and larger rather than trying to address a group of 100 people at once. Um, so that's a great idea for you. Um, I think if you're doing a group interview, you want to have two people either with opposite opinions yeah. or two people who are like who work together maybe co-writers or people who are on the same team as far as animal rescues or something like that you know or survivors of Houston you know you never know things like that um, but who have some similarity or conflict that will make interesting conversation that you can go back and forth with them no, absolutely. And, you know, you look at Bill Maher. You look at Bill O'Reilly. Oh, I love Bill Maher. <laughs> I'm trying to get him on the show. I'm trying to be on his show. But, unfortunately, Bert Stu playing phone tag. And I'm not that big of a star yet. But, right. you know, hopefully I get to that point. But Well, you're in New York, right? So why don't you try John Oliver? I mean, he doesn't really have interviews, but he might, like, mention you or, or have you on for a moment or so. It's not a bad idea. We can talk about that off the air. Mm -hmm. And the next question... Or even Jimmy Fallon. I like Jimmy Fallon. We, we watch him all the time. You know, it's funny. What is your honest opinion for my show? You know, what is, you know, I always save this for the end, but let me just throw it out to you in the beginning. What is... Well, let's save that question to the end, but let's... Use the same format but a different point. What is your expect of to my show? When I first approached you about the concept of my show, you know, what were you expecting? You know, am I living up to what you expected? You know, what is your overall opinion? You know, tell you the truth, I don't remember the original concept, the original logline. 
um, of what the show was supposed to be about. I just you were interviewing. I thought at the time you were interviewing writers to improve your own writing ability and to educate others. That's what I seem to remember, but it's been a while. No, I it, I did want to be a writer, and at the time I was writing my book. You know, it is out, but I pulled it because it was a lot of spelling errors. Actually, if you would like to work on that with me, I would love to hire you. Uh, I, I, I'd <laughs> love to, but I am really so overwhelmed with my own stuff right now. I have so many projects that I can barely handle what I have. Well, you know, passing the show over to you, what have you been up to for the past three years? Well, as I said earlier, um, I was hired by a descendant of of slaves who um, inherited their master's plantation when he was murdered by the Klan. And um, and in his will, he had left um, the slaves and his, his their mutual children um, his property. And it was after the Civil War. And the, um, the nephew who had thought he was going to inherit was determined to do everything he could to um, cause troubles and obstacles for them and even join the clan to help, you know, to help frighten them. But he didn't, um, he didn't plan on his niece, on, on his cousin's uh, abolitionist assistance. And in the end, 12 years after Will, William Dawkins died, um, the women finally inherited what was rightfully theirs. This is in South Carolina. And the book is going to be published by University of South Carolina Press, I believe, I think that's a history, one of the history things that they have. And um, the script has won numerous awards, include Page Awards and uh, Capital Fund Awards and a few other things. And uh, hopefully we'll get it produced pretty soon. Yeah, it's and, I'm sorry, uh, I didn't mean to interrupt. Sure. That's called The Master's Will. And I am also doing my short uh, uh, the Unborn Witness, I'm doing it now as a book and a script, uh, ex expanding it. Um, that's about a young girl in utero who experiences her mother's murder in utero and hears the mother's anguish and fear and, and hears the killer's voice if I was to go back and find the killer. Um, then I am doing also, I just finished a book about a heist true, true crime and I am, uh, I'm working on um, on a couple of other things, including a woman who helped a uh, multiple personality um, come out and and heal herself. Oh, nice. uh, among other things. Now, among when, other things. <laughs> the, the first book you're mentioning is that just a book you made up, or is it a true story? No, it's a true story. Um, I mean, I fictionalize obviously in dialogue. We have Will, we have articles, we have all his historical things from the family. And in fact, the land still belongs in the family, in the Dawkins family. No, absolutely. We're going to take a quick come also break. And when we come back, I'm going to pass the show over to you after we finish our subject on this. Because I got okay. an interesting question for you. Okay, great. A message for yourself or as a gift for someone else. For personal connections, shout outs, birthdays, proposals, weddings, and much more. Enter your details about yourself so the celebrity can record a personal video message, especially for you, including details such as your name, age, birthday, hobbies, or whatever else you include. As soon as the video has been recorded, you'll get an email with your link so you can share it on social media or download and keep it. Celebrities record videos as and when they can, usually within two weeks. But if you want a video for a specific date and it does not look like it will arrive in time, you can cancel it and get an instant refund at the click of a button. There are hundreds of celebrities to choose from and many more joining every day. Search by category or genre. Buy a gift voucher, get updates and offers, and encourage your favorite celebrities to join so they can connect with fans in a fun and unique way. Raise money for their charities and much more. So order your video now for yourself or for someone else. 181 and here's a good friend of mine, Sarita Stevens. And we left off when you're talking about the bugs of the Masters. And the Masters will. The Masters will, no disrespect. <laughs> Yeah. I'm just thinking of He-Man Masters of the Universe. Mm. <laughs> That's something totally different. No, absolutely. <laughs> now, it's the Masters of Will. You said you looked up all the historical facts and everything, so you have everything you need. 
But with that being said, what is your honest opinion about people racing history or trying to race history? Oh, trying to erase history. Oh, I didn't realize. Okay, so you mean like trying to destroy the statues, Confederate statues and stuff like that? Yeah. Well, um, it's obvious that the meanings for the statue, it's not just a beautiful statue of, of somebody that did his, I mean, Lee was a, a marvelous general. He's one, one of the top generals. But to the white Southern Ku Klux Klan people racist, it means white supremacy. It means, you know, yeah. the whites win, blah, 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 blah. And it means, you know, the South should have won. And to anybody else who is more liberal, uh, not just blacks, but anybody who feels that, uh, that slavery was wrong, it indicates um, a time when our country was torn apart, when um, so many people, I think more people died in the Civil War than they did in Vietnam. I don't remember the exact number, but it, it was really very brutal, and it took a long time for our country to heal after that. And it commemorates showing, showing the Confederate flag and showing... Um, you know, uh, statues of Lee and and those people give people a sense of superiority, and I think it it also makes the the those that living in the in the community um, it feels crushing them down and making them second class as they were at the time before the Civil War. So. I can certainly understand the, the, the feelings on both sides. And just to say, well, they're a nice statue, like Trump is saying, I don't go by that. So. No, I agree with you, and not to impose. You know, it's part of history. You know, either, you know, you know, hey, anything can happen live, right? <laughs> so, you know, every country has history to it. You know, America, Canada, England, it doesn't matter, you know, it's history, you're supposed to learn from history, you know, mm -hmm. if you fail to re respect history, you're doomed to repeat it. Actually, and, and people um, don't understand, history is written usually from the side of the winner. Yes. For instance, at one time, Anne Boleyn was written as a wonderful queen and loving, and then she was written as a traitor and, and um, you know, a whore and stuff like that after Henry decided he wanted to marry his third wife. You know, so it's, it, and it just, it's who's writing the story, from what attitude, what point of view. Um, actually, the same thing with any story you're writing. Who's the point of view, who's the character being affected and who's affecting things? Okay, let's look at this point. I'm making go back to your book. It's you're writing a book about me, and you can say, "Oh, Keith is a wonderful person. He's doing all these great things for people with special needs." But anyone who reads that book or has a problem with that would say, "Oh, Keith's an asshole. He's making it up, or here he's trying to misscrew facts." So it's kind of like that. Wait, wait. Uh, who's what's the care? What's the name of the person? Oh, so it does say hypothetically you're right. Oh, hypothetical. About okay, okay. Well, again, you have to look at what is the story you're trying to tell. Is there a message you're trying to tell? Um, even if you if you're trying to write a biography, you're never going to get the whole story. You know, and the whole people say that my life is exciting and I should write write my true life story. But if you write my life, blah 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 blah, <laughs> boring. You, you have to take sections of the life and attitudes and, and take events and highlight that to make it interesting. Um, uh, look at Steve Jobs. Um, they say that he was really a, a terrible human being in many respects and mean to his, his ex-wife and his, and his daughter until, until late and, and people around him. So do you highlight that or do you highlight the fact that he created what he created? You know, you, you have to look and see what are you trying to do with this story? What does it mean? What is this, what is the attitude you're trying to portray? And you also have to balance it, too, and show that, you know, even somebody from Sopranos can like pets and be good to his wife, even while they're shooting the next guy, you know, their, their competition. So everybody, it, there's no 
very, very few true evil or true good. Everybody's balanced. No, I just have to look at both sides. I agree with you. Now, my last subject for you, I'm going to pass it over to you, is how do you feel about social media? Can social media make you or break you? And what's your honest opinion about mm. it? Passing the show over to you. Well, um, uh, Mr. President Trump has certainly made <laughs> great use of Twitter. Um, so I guess social media did make him in many respects. And it might even be the one to break him in many respects because of the way he tweets um, off the top of his head. I don't know. Um, I do know that when a publisher is looking at you for potential publishing your story or book, um, they want to know what is your social media platform, how many how many fans do you have that will buy your book. Same thing with every, every, somebody somebody's going to produce your movie. They, are, they want an IP, an uh, intellectual property, uh, to know that you have fans already. And again, how are you going to publicize it? Through your social media, through your fans. Um, uh, so social media is, is crucial in this day and age, yes. And it can make or break you. You say the wrong thing. Um, Ten years ago, if I had said something, I don't even want to repeat it, you know, like, if I said something really racist and stuff like that, just off, and, it, and I didn't mean it, yeah. but off, somebody took it wrong, um, it would come back to haunt me. Or if I took a picture of myself um, in a very seductive, uh, lewd pose, um, nowadays, um, employers, they say, look at your social media to see if they want to hire you. And they see that, and they're saying, uh-uh, we're not going to hire her. You were arrested for, for, drug, for drugs three times, you know, and speeding four times, you know. So, yeah, social media is very important these days. But what can you say? <laughs> hey, no one's perfect, right? And I'm a perfect example. Actually, I got something I want to show you. I went to the uh, Native American Fair recently, and this really stood out to me. It's oh. my own little yin yang. Yin yang is it Asian? That's uh, Japanese or uh, I think Japanese or Chinese. I'm Chinese. not really sure. And uh, it's funny, you know, I because I work in the store, but when we get a lot of Asian customers, they always come over to me and say, like, "Oh, I really like your necklace." And I used to say thank you. Now I came up with something funny. And when they asked me, it's like, yeah, yin yang, the story of my life. Uh huh. Because I portray myself as a human yin yang because I am a good person, but at, at the same time, I do stupid things. Not. We all do that. We all. Are, I think we all do things that we think are stupid or things that we regret later on. But, you know, as they say, one door closes, another door opens. And sometimes you don't know why you are led to do something. Sometimes it's, you know, what the Lord wants you to do. You know, I mean, you have to be listen to your instinct and be guided. I mean, I probably never would have moved out to California if I hadn't divorced my husband. I probably wouldn't have... Um, adopted my daughter from Romania as a single mom if I hadn't divorced my second husband and and was was unable to adopt here and it turned out beautifully on both ends you know sometimes I think about well what would happen if but you know this is what it is yeah absolutely now it's last 10 minutes left and I pass it over to you was there anything you wanted to talk about? Anything you want to promote? This is your time, after all. Well, um, obviously, I want to promote my own books, <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, uh, people people want to see more about me. It's SaritaStevens.com, S-E-R-I-T-A-S-E-V-N-S.com, and my IMBD is Sarita D. Stevens, um, and I do book scripts, adaptations, teach writing. One of my, I've taught at UCLA, USC, a number of conferences. I do, I convert books and scripts and vice versa. And I'm also trained as a forensic nurse. And I do legal nurse consulting. Uh, and I, in fact, I just helped with a legal case where the, um, the 
the other side claimed that the victim had received a black eye from hitting her head, left head against the wall. Black eye was on the right side. Um, there were no abrasions on the left side. Um, and um, you could really only get, I mean, there are other ways, but the main way of getting a black eye is through blunt force trauma, yeah. just to the eye, you know, direct. Um, and so I was able to prove um, that it's not what the, um, it's not what is said. It's what the evidence tells you, what the evidence shows you. And that's exactly what I told the jury, and we won the case. Um, and it's a matter of, you know, looking at everything around you and seeing what is really, really being said. You know, a matter of he said, she said, you know. Um, and uh, I was going to say, too, that writing, publishing, and um, producing have changed dramatically in the years since I first started. Um it is very hard for independent people to uh, make a living at it these days. Um, a lot of people, I think, I think my ex, my second husband, I think, married me because he thought, "Oh, you're a writer. You must be rich." <laughs> and unfortunately, you know, you know, the reason Mary Higgins Clark gets written up that she gets a million dollars, two million dollars for a book, is because it's unusual. Um, you know, and these days it's even more unusual. The majority of Writers do not get advances anymore. We used to get, you know, any advance anywhere from five hundred to several thousand. Um, and now it's very rare. Now, the majority, the major publishers um, have glommed together and try to publish only um, really hot commercial books by really hot writers that they already that they promote a lot, you know, stuff like that. Whereas, uh, and the same thing with the studios, too. If you want to get something in the studios, they're going to want blockbuster, Marvel, superhero, um, you know, top A-list writers. They, in, in, even even stars, even George Clooney starring in a movie can't, and, um, and, uh, can't guarantee a draw of the audience these days. So people with independent movies, independent books are going to um, smaller sources. And many of the independent publishers who have broken off um, do, do not do any publicity for you. Well, you even, even, as, even as an author of a ma major, um, uh, major company like Simon & Schuster, I had to do my own publicity too because they only give you a small amount. And if you want to get your name known, you have to do your own publicity. Um, but now it's even more so. Now everything, I used to be able to sell a book on three chapters and a synopsis, even one chapter in a synopsis. Now, even I have to write a full book on spec. That means in speculation without a contract. And it has to be um, totally perfect, edited perfectly before I can send it in. Uh, it, it's no longer, you know, that's why so many people are doing self-publishing. Although self-publishing is really, really hard. And most self-publishing is not edited properly. And really doesn't sell well unless you really put a lot of effort into publicity. Um, and again, um, many um, people trying to do movies are doing independent movies, smaller companies. Um, movies that are low budget will fare better. Um, they say anywhere between, I think it's between 20 and 60 million as far as a budget, which it sounds like a lot of money, is the no man's land it, because it's really hard to make um, a movie, the money back, if a movie falls on that. Either it has to be a huge budget, like Marvel superhero, or it has to be a very low budget, like Get Out, or, you know, or um, a Blair Witch, or one of those, you know, something that is really simple to produce. So you have to be aware of what, you, what your goals are, and as we talked before about goals, you have small goals. You can't write a big sci-fi movie and unless it's really really marvelous of course everybody thinks Star Wars is marvelous which isn't true it's a lot of rewriting and people don't realize a lot and you have to have several samples of different things um uh it's you have to um start small and build your name so that's you know it's it's a lot harder 
um, succeeding in the creative industry than it used to be. Now, do you think uh, social media helps with that, or do you? Think oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely, social media helps because your fans want to buy your stuff. There are a lot of different sites where you can mention your books and things like that. But even then, you don't want to be pushy. Yeah. And also, especially in the filmmaking business, it's it's a relationship industry. Um, I, I do a lot of networking. I go to a lot of events. And, you know, if um, so-and-so is a producer, um, knows me from um, bringing them coffee or, or going out to lunch with them, even if my script isn't as good as your script, they will probably consider mine more because they know me. Maybe. At least, at least they give me a first consideration. You know what I'm saying? So it's all a matter of, of making it a win-win situation. I always try to ask somebody, how can I help you? What can I do to assist you? Yeah. And, and try to look at what, what service you can do for them. And then they say, well, oh, do you have anything I can read? You know, type of thing. But you can't expect that. You can't go up to somebody and say, here, read my script. Read my book. You know, and you can't say to somebody, you know, oh, write my book with me. Um, I have a lot of people who have asked me that, Keith. Um, <laughs> and you don't understand how much work it really goes into writing a book. You know, um, and I know a lot of people um, just feel that it's real simple and they just have to sit down and write. And it's not that simple. You know, I... Uh yeah, I am guilty of that. <laughs> I, I made my own little book. You know, I was jealous of my uh, my brother. I used my brother as an inspiration. And I was like, well, might as well use a disability as a strength instead of a weakness. So I wrote That's up this, That's this book about my life. And I worked with Exuberus, one of the uh, stupidest things i ever done. And I wasted, I think, like five hundred dollars. Okay, nothing is ever stupid if you learn from it. No, absolutely. Now, at the time, I didn't have my talk show. I just had a story about my life. Now it's the perfect time to write that book. But at the time, I was jealous, and I was kind of did it on a whim, saying, "Well, if you can do it, I can do it too." Or you know, one of those things. Right. And I asked Exuberus, you know, can you, um, is it readable? And they said, yes. And can people understand it? Yes. And I said, okay, but it does force it through, I will pay it. I got a copy of my book on the day it was released to Amazon and everywhere else. And <laughs> I'll give you a perfect example how bad it was. I said my mom went to uh, Community College. Uh -huh. And instead of saying, my mom went to Camille College. It said my mom went to Comedy College. Oh no! And instead I of read it, <laughs> and I said, um, "Oh, I can use." I was born on Long Island. It said I was born on Long Land. Ooh. It's like so. Everyone makes a joke about. It. It's like, yeah, I come from Long Land, land by water. <laughs> so basically, yes. If I wanted to make a joke in my life. The book is fine as a comedy, Ooh. but I was so mad that because I asked them, is it readable? Can you proofread it? And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And next thing you know, it's like one... Oh, you know, don't trust people like that, really. <laughs> you know, they will make them, they will promise you the moon and the and, uh, and stars and, and Pluto and Jupiter as well. And, and, and they probably won't give it to you. That's true. Now I just say, if you want something done right, you just do it yourself. You don't take it, you don't rely on people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I do have a couple questions for you off the air, but my last subject, I'm a big fan of Bill O'Reilly, so going on the record, when I first approached you to be a guest on my talk show, mm -hmm. what was your first reaction? And after doing a three-year follow-up, how do you feel now? And would you compare... Uh, my, let's see, would you compare my capabilities of getting better over the three years? Uh, you've definitely gotten better over three years, but what does that have to do with Bill O'Reilly? I'm a big fan of Bill O'Reilly, so I use... Uh, Are you sexually harassing people? Huh? 
Are you sexually harassing women? No. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. I take it you're not a fan of Bill Riley. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, just saying, you know, how would you... I'm just trying to say what's I'm a fan of Bill Maher. Well, I was saying, when he first did the interview with me, how would Ooh. you compare that to a three-year later follow-up? You know, I'm sorry, Keith, it's been so long, I don't remember what it was like. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thanks so many things have happened. I do not remember what it was like in the beginning, the last one, because um, I, I do a lot of interviews. Right. Um, but um, but you're definitely more polished now. I, I, I can see that. Yeah, I, and you're more together. I appreciate it. Now, I'm looking forward to doing part three with see down the road. About okay. wrapping up our interview. Well, when, my, when my TV show gets gets picked up, for sure, I will let you know. Hey, if you ever want me to promote it, just let me know. Okay. You got me, I help you. <laughs> okay, great.